If I might tell you just briefly how I came to be born again, I was born into a Christian family. My father was an elder in the Presbyterian Church, and I was one of his four children. There was my older sister, my older brother, my younger sister, and myself. So there were four of us. From the time I was a young child, I was very diligent about attending church. But then when I was about 12 years old, my mother passed away. Later, following my father's recommendation, I graduated from theological college and became a pastor. Even though I was a pastor, I was not born again. Even though I was a pastor, I was not born again. So there was no change in my heart. Since my heart remained the same as that of an ordinary person who was not a pastor, my views on life, my outlook on the world, my attitude towards material possessions were all just the same as those of other people. Since it was with these same attitudes that I would take my Bible and preach sermons to my congregation, I felt frustrated, and my listeners probably felt the same. It seems I was quite good at preaching sermons and was recognized for this. I even led revival meetings, but no matter what I did, I had a heavy burden in my heart. So how could I bring relief to the hearts of others? Even so, I worked as a pastor for about 10 years. I was quite a conscientious person. Having grown up in a Christian family, I had learned from my childhood that it was a sin to lie. So I tried not to lie, and because I had been taught that anger is a sin, I tried not to be angry. Even so, there were times when I would get angry, and at times I would tell a lie. And every time I did this, I felt uneasy in my heart. When I read the Bible, I find it says that I must not lie, and it says that I must not be angry, but I found it impossible not to lie or become angry. So what could I do about it? Questions like this began to arise in my heart. So the teachings of the Bible didn't match what was actually in my heart. In other words, my ideals did not match with reality. There was this tremendous inconsistency in my life. I spent day after day feeling lost and conflicted in the midst of this state in my life. In the midst of this inconsistency, I felt conflicted and wandered lost day after day. When I was a child, when I was a child, my father lived in such a way that if a homeless person knocked on the door of our house when it was cold in the middle of winter, my father would invite him in to stay with us. We ourselves were poor, and our house only had two bedrooms. My father would sleep in the master bedroom, and he would have the homeless person sleep there in his room. This is the kind of person he was. Later, the room would be crawling with lice, and he would have no choice but to send the visitor on his way. One day when I was a child, a beggar came to our house in the middle of winter to ask for some food. My father swung open the door and seeing the man, he asked, Are you cold? Shivering, the beggar replied, Yes, I am. Without another word, my father just took off his own jacket and put it on the man, telling him to keep it. This is the kind of person my father was. I was raised by such a father. So I too was inclined to live by my conscience since I grew up in such an environment. Then, after I became a pastor, a conflict arose in my heart. Let me explain. One day, as I was reading Matthew's Gospel chapter 22, I came across the part in which a lawyer asked Jesus, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus replied, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I had set aside the part about loving God. I had set aside loving God. 
but then it says to love your neighbor as yourself. And these words pierced my heart to the core. I was a pastor, and it was my task to preach what is in the Bible. Since the Bible talks about love so much, I would do my best to preach about love. But when I asked myself if I truly loved my neighbor as myself, I couldn't say that I did. So that was a problem, wasn't it? I would stand up in the pulpit and preach my sermons. With Bible in hand, I would talk away. But what I said was all lies. This is because I myself could not love my neighbor as myself. I couldn't do it myself. So how could I tell others to love? This was the problem. My words were nothing but lies. So the issue that gave rise to the problem in my heart was the fact that I was a hypocrite. I am a hypocrite. Because I was preaching and telling others to do something that I myself was not able to do. Didn't that make me a hypocrite? Then one day, something happened. It was when I was being transferred from my church in the countryside to one in the city. I received an invitation to a church in the city. They wanted to hear me preaching, and if they approved, they would invite me to be their pastor. But first, they wanted to hear me preach, so I thought about what I could talk about. As I was thinking about what subject I should preach about on this occasion, something occurred to me. These days, I preach with just the Bible in my hand. But at that time, I would write out my sermons in a large college notebook, filling at least five pages back and front, and then just read out what I had written. On this occasion, I wrote as the title of my sermon, I am a wage earner, and proceeded to prepare what I would say. So, I went to the city church and gave my trial sermon. I began by saying, the title of my sermon today is, I am a wage earner. My listeners immediately began murmuring to one another. He's quite strange. He calls himself a wage earner. I told them I was saying this because if they did not pay me, I wouldn't be able to go there. I would go and preach there and carry out my duties as a pastor in return for being paid. So that made me a wage earner. So I told them I would do my best in the position of a wage earner. This was a city church and it was attended by people of high status in society and others who were very wealthy. But I preached that sermon, and they accepted me. Since I came across as being quite unique, they decided to give me a try. I lived like this, but I cried every single day. Every day I would get up before dawn and say my early morning prayers. But by the end, I would be drenched in tears. I was in so much anguish in my heart. I was a wage earner, a hypocrite. I told others they were to practice love when I couldn't do it myself. I was a hypocrite. But no matter how much I cried, it didn't help. Sometimes I stayed up all night praying. There was even one time when I went into the mountains and stayed there for three days without eating anything and without sleeping. I just prayed continually the whole time. But even so, it gave me no comfort. There seemed to be nothing I could do to solve the problem. Then one day, I read an article in a magazine. There was a magazine in those days called The World of Ideas, and the article was in that magazine. The author had written, A prostitute sells her body to earn a living. A teacher sells knowledge to earn a living. And the pastor of a church sells ethics and morals to earn a living. So what difference is there between them? He said that the prostitute and the pastor were just the same. They were both trying to earn a living. When I read this article, I felt as if someone had taken a sharp knife and was hacking at my heart. I even felt that a prostitute was more honest than I was. A prostitute is treated with contempt by many people, but she doesn't try to hide the fact that she is a sinner, and others walk all over her as she tries to earn a living. 
But when I stood up in the church pulpit wearing my gown, I looked like an angel in the eyes of those who were looking at me. They thought I was wonderful. And the good words that poured from my lips seemed to flow as smooth as silk. But when I really looked deep into my heart, it seemed that I was no different from a prostitute. Why was that? Why was I no different? I had never stolen anything. But when I saw things, I felt greed and had the desire to possess them. And I had never committed the sin of adultery. But do you think pastors are any different from other men? When I saw a beautiful woman, strange feelings would be aroused inside of me. We are all the same on the inside. On the day I read that magazine article, I cried all night long. Lord, why? There are so many other ways to earn a living in this world. Why did you give me the job of a pastor so that I have to be fake, tormented by my conscience and live as a hypocrite? Why did you make me earn a living in this way? Please give me another job, or else take my life. I cried all night long. Then one day, as I was reading the Bible, certain words of truth resolved the problem. At the same time, all the anguish and suffering in my conscience that I had been going through just came to an end. At first, I didn't know what had happened. Later, I met a missionary I knew, and I told him about it. When he heard what I said, he grabbed my hand and said, That's it. That is being born again. Once I had come to know this truth, the world became totally different to me. This is still the case, even now. My whole outlook on life changed. The sad and painful world I had known had now gone far, far away. I received a definite answer from the words of the Bible. And that is why I'm telling you all this. That was on November 18th, 1961. Ever since that day, as a result of coming to know this truth, I have been criticized by many people, and I have been through some very difficult trials but I've never had any regrets in my heart. Not once. I can now face death, no matter when it may come, and I can welcome it. Why is that? It's not that my face changed. Something changed inside me. 